Hey, welcome back. We're home. <laughs> another day, another vlog. Hope you're all well. Just finished night shift. Had to wait for the plane. It's on the late plane. Think it am till 10 to 12, but I'm here. It's near half past two. So I'm going pretty well. Um, I haven't put the photo out today. I'll do that. Um, today's photo on Instagram if you haven't got that. For all you people over on the podcast, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're all well. I've got a bit of a visual day today, so I'll try and explain it as much as I can as I go through. And you might be able to come over and when you get a chance, when you're not listening on the podcast, to check out the channel. Rightio, first of all, big show. Uh, the new video's up. I've just dumped that up online. It's up on the channel, YouTube. Uh, Astrophoto Epic Astrophotography in the Pilbara. And wow, it come up really good. It uh, <laughs> The poor old computer just about cooked itself. It uh, took, I think it's a 24 minute video, so it's a little bit longer, so please bear with me. There's some fantastic photos at the end of it. Make sure you go and see them. Uh, and wow, yeah, I, I'm so happy with how these the photos I got this swing at work uh, in my spare time. It was just amazing, and yeah, just I'm still a little bit blown away every time I look at them, so super excited about it. Please let me know in the comments uh, what you think about it and if you enjoyed it. I hope you do as much as I do uh, making it. Uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty funny. Some funny stuff in there. I think I was a little bit cooked and sleep deprived, but uh, I was dancing the jig in the middle of the dirt road at three and a four or four o'clock in the morning or something ridiculous. <laughs> so yeah, it was pretty cool. Go go watch a video, uh, some just amazing, including what I call my God Pano, which is basically it's a vertical panorama of the Milky Way and it's got a little tiny little bit of foreground. It was too distant the way I had to capture it. Uh, so I couldn't really light paint that, but you don't really know. So that it just sort of gives the scale of how big and amazing the Milky Way is and how beautiful it came out. It was just stunning, absolutely stunning. So go check that out, the video's up live, share it around to your friends. Mate, if you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you subscribe, that helps me out. Um, yeah, very cool on the video front. <clears throat> I've got some unboxings. Work away two weeks, stuff you all sort of order, you gotta you save up for and plan ahead. Uh, I've had some things come in, uh, so which is pretty cool. And probably we'll, just, we'll start here because I've already had to get it's already out of the box. I got a did a bit of eBay shopping. I've got a nice little EF 28 to 80 zoom to try. I wanted to give that a crack and give an EF a lens on my Viltrox mount adapter. That's with the speed booster, so I just want to see what that goes. So we'll, we'll I'll let you know how that's going and we'll see what we can get out of that. Works, tested, comes up good on the camera, so that's really good. Super stoked with that. A little bit of a zoom. It's a little bit big, but with that speed booster on there, basically it brings it back to whatever it was. So even though it's normally would blow out to like a 56 to that, 56 to a, uh, a 120, it's um, basically a 28 to 80 now with that booster on there. So that's really cool. So looking forward to test that out and suss it out. So that'll take me from 16 mil that I've got on now, which is basically a 24, 24 to we'll hit that, then 20 to 80, and then me 55 to 200, which is like a 75, so it'll sort of join on. Now the one, you sometimes you make stuff ups, and I, I, I thought I had it right, and I thought the Viltrox Speed Booster covered it, but it only covers EF lenses. So just a heads up for you on that, because I thought I could mount this puppy, which I'm super excited about trying out. 10 to 18 mil Canon. Again, another eBay purchase. I've got a good deal on it. Uh, it's in mint condition, no dramas at all, but I can't use the booster. So I've got to get uh, just the normal mount, Canon mount. You can get a Viltrox one, but uh, I'm looking at one. I've got, a, I've got a couple now on eBay to suss out, so I'll suss it out. So I don't think I'll be able to take that to work with me. I'll see what I can find. I've got to go to the shops this week anyway to get a mouse so I might look at that anyway so but that I'm super excited that 10 mil is gonna be insane uh, 
it'd be even wider than the 16 mil Sigma. So it gives me that another thing for those big close-ups and get that sort of perspective sort of warp on some landscape stuff. So I'm super excited about that, especially with the Milky Way as well, some other stuff to try. So looking forward to using that. Now I do use a, a clip for my camera. <clears throat> I didn't get that out. I was supposed to get that out. Um, but it's a cheap Chinese copy. I didn't want to invest in one of these uh, peak, the actual guys that make them. Um, so I tried one. <clears throat> and it's really good. It's a little bit clunky. And I've been using it for a while. And it's actually better than the uh, having a collar or a wristband. I, I Definitely find I'm using that more often than not. So I finally invested while well, Capture had uh, Peak had their sale on not long ago for 20% off. Uh, I got the actual Peter, the Capture clip. So super excited about that from Peak. Uh, it looks it's actually smaller than the one I've got, um, and you can definitely see the difference in the build quality. So that's going to make a massive difference running around the bush. Uh, so looking forward to whacking the camera on that one. Uh, some lights. I've been struggling with lights. I have multiple times since I think October was the first time I ordered some and this is the only problem I will say about eBay. You do get dodgy salespeople on there. Um, I've been trying to get these Ulanzi lenses. Um, or these lights. These are basically a very similar to this Loom Cube which I've got. Um, obviously Loom Cube is the top of the range pretty expensive 150 bucks for one of these uh, I've got this one second hand so that was a good deal um, this one was I think these were 20 bucks each so I bought two of these just to give them a test and compare them up against the loom cube so a bit of a test coming there for that one uh, 100 odd dollars versus 20 bucks now it has taken me six months to get these because I've gone through two sellers that just never sent them uh, but I finally found a seller and they got here within three weeks during COVID. So that was pretty insane. So super stoked about that. <clears throat> now they're 10 meters waterproof, pretty much the same as the Loom Cube. They come with uh, your gels and a, a mount and a little wristband, uh, all that for 20 bucks. So, and obviously your charging cable, it's a micro USB charging cable. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. If uh, it's, and it'll be interesting to see, you can see of the, obviously there's subtle differences and the weight of the Loom Cube and that. So it's a good comparison to see the cheap. Uh, look, it's taken me a while to save up to get this stuff. So I know I'm basically a budget photographer. So I think it's always good to try these things. And sometimes you don't need the world's best things. It's great once you try these to see if they help you out, then you can buy the good stuff like I've done with the Peak Design capture clip. I tried the cheap version to see if I'm gonna use it and use that that style. Um, and I'd use it all the time. So now, and then I saved up to buy one of these and you, that's that's when, that's how I reckon that's the best way to do it. Instead of <clears throat> diving in and buying a 1DX with all the gear, L3L lens, the holy trinity and spending $20,000 Start with an M50, start with newer, your basic stuff, and your Alanzis, which <laughs> work fine, they're great. I have no, I've not had any dramas with Alanzi products, so you can't, definitely can't knock them um, <clears throat> for quality. And then work your way up once you know you're happy and you, and you want to keep doing it, and you, so you don't have to then throw a thousand, twenty thousand dollars away, you might only lose a couple of grand if you sort of walk away from it all. So I think that's the best way to do it with some products. Now, I do have some other exciting stuff. Super excited about, so let's get these in. It's a bit of, a, bit of an unboxing show, but again, something I'll be waiting a long time for. The, uh, oh, this one's huge, I probably should've got the bag off there. I'm back. <laughs> Ooh. What have we got here? Three-legged thing? Oh yeah. Legends in the tripod game. I really don't have much room here. Let me just move some stuff here. Sorry about this. Very unorganized, isn't it? That's what happens when you 
had 55 minutes of sleep in the last 24 hours. <laughs> uh. Now, three-legged thing ha ha do have sales on at the moment. Um, well, they, they have had, and they have different models up for sale and you get different things. Um, we've, I got the, what did I get? The Albert, Albert Equinox Pro. Very nice, very excited about this one. Now also, while I had that on, they had the sale where you get the free limited edition L bracket, so that's in here as well. But I also, because you've seen the capture, the Peak Design capture clip, I got the Ellie with the Peak Design clip on it as well, so that is very cool. I won't open this right up. I just wanted to show you, we've got it. We're gonna go through that. That's gonna be a whole video. I'll do a whole video on that one. And I think that's my thing. But pretty cool packaging. Nice gear, we're gonna go through that. And I haven't gone anywhere, so don't go anywhere. The other one, uh, those of you that do, <laughs> do hiking, which is a lot of my stuff I do, and I go bushwalking. Um, I have been wanting to buy some decent boots. I'll be wearing my steel cap work boots <laughs> and they're not comfortable. <laughs> they're waterproof and they're leather and uh, snakes and uh, goannas and all those stuff proof, which is pretty important. Um, but they're not comfortable. So I have gone, one of the best boots you can get on sale too, half price, insane. Um, Dana Boots, uh, huge name in the industry. James Bond even went for them. Orange laces, You'll, that's for the ladies. The ladies will love that. And what do you think of these puppies? How cool are they? They look super nice and I can't wait. Vibrant sole, fully waterproof. Um, yeah, built for hiking. Super excited about that. We uh, have no excuses anymore. Orange lace on there. Give it a crack. So yeah, some exciting things happening. Uh, been, these have been things I've been planning for a good six months. So it's taken me that long to save up, find them, research them, do the old stuff. So I'm pretty happy with what's going on there. So yeah. Sort of like Christmas, but I didn't have Christmas as much, so I've been spending it all on the house. And we can't sell the house, so that was the other thing, bad stuff to come home to. We, uh, we had some people lowball us on offers, which were pretty average. So it looks like we're staying in Perth for another year, which is sort of fine, because I'm, I'm actually enjoying it a lot now, because I've been traveling so much around this beautiful state. Uh, there's still a heap I want to see and do. Um, that was the reason I went back to work early to keep my holidays so I could go and do some stuff if we do sell the house and then drive across to Queensland. It's looking more and more like that, unfortunately. Uh, you never know, we'll get another house open this weekend. We might find the right person. And I think that's half the problem. It's like, it's not like a, it's like cars, I guess you're selling a house, you sell a car. You've got to find the most houses have their own character. Like a, like a car, you've got to find that right person that's ready to buy, that wants that, and then we'll be fine. So, I'd, again, worst case, we just stay another 12 months and we move next year. But uh, all good. More photography, more stuff. There's more parks I want to do. There's heaps of places down south of WA I want to check out. So, yeah, plenty to do there. Now, I've got my new nice boots. Definitely... Cool, I'll uh, be giving you a review on those ones as we wear them and check them out. Now, over on some tech, little bit of tech news for you. Wow, <laughs> just exploded last night. Quickly, uh, AMD and NVIDIA are set to launch the new graphics cards in September. So just keep piling it on top, uh, AMD. The Intel has had a bit of a bounce back lately with their current 10th gen chips, 
pumping out and they've done really well and to some great reviews but AMD's bouncing back they've got more chips coming and these graphics cards coming in September they get ready for them and get ready to unload your wallet because uh, uh, I think whatever Intel's just brought out I think AMD's looking to smash around the ballpark again this year so they're they're looking to back up their huge wins they had in 2019 2020 I'd don't think it's going to stop them, uh, even with the COVID. I think their technology is that advanced and, and they're just going ahead in leaps and bounds and they've got must have just a fantastic team of guys there working because they're doing great things and I expect nothing less than probably another touch-up for Intel. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> sitting there listening to music, watching a bit of YouTube while I was uh, uh, last night at Smoko and... <laughs> all of a sudden do, 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 literally how many 10 10 simultaneous videos uploaded from creators on YouTube all for the Sony SV1 release the new vlogging camera from Sony it scared the living crap out of me to see 10 of the most high profile YouTubers I Justine uh, Linus TechLink was up there. Uh, who else? Jared Poland, Art of Photography, Potato Jet, just bang, 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 bang. Just all just like the uh, NDAs must have all just like finished at a certain time. And with 18 minutes, I Justine was in the lead. I thought it was a bit of a game. So I started watching to see who got the most views in the amount of time. And at the, basically the 20 minute mark, I Justine was in front by about nearly 2,000 views. So there you go, uh, pretty cool, she was in front. It was actually strange because the one person I thought who normally gets everything out first is MKBH, and he didn't have one. Um, I'm not sure what happened, maybe he didn't want to do that one or wasn't really his thing. It's only a small vlogging camera, he's more big tech and probably moved on a bit from that. Uh, even Lou on Unbox Therapy, didn't see one from him. I think he did one the day after. I'm not or today. I'm not sure, but yeah, it was pretty. It was it was pretty funny, just to sit there and just see your subscription and things go da, 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 and like two or three rows, and it's just all all thumbnails of everyone holding up this Sony camera. Um, I did check out a couple. I checked out Potato Jet. I checked out Matty Hoppers, and I also checked out Kenya Cameron. Camera Conspiracies, and he is gold. He's a funny dude. Uh, Potato Jet had a really good review and some good stuff in it. Uh, so did Matty Hoppy is. And also Camera Conspiracies, he he sort of ripped them a bit, and he also put some good things. He was, in, he was impressed by a lot of the things. I think overwhelmingly for it, uh, the biggest thing out of it was the fact that it was a 24 mil uh, uh, lens so much like with my 16 mil which crops basically with the APS-C goes to a 24 mil when I have it close I've really got to hold it right out or I've got to put it on the Joby to get it out if I'm going to use the vlogging so I generally use the GoPro on here uh, to do the vlogs to do the moving stuff just because it, the 16 mil would be perfect if it if it didn't crop in because of the APS-C um, unfortunately that doesn't happen but it is that's what they need 24 mil is just a little bit tight and you just don't get to see a little you don't get that feeling of where you are and I agree with all three of them in that regards that if they could have made it at 16 to a 35 or a 16 to a 16 to 35 or something around there 16 mil upwards Zoom would have been so much better for them and it would have really elevated up into you need this camera. So had some awesome things on there. Uh, it's got an auto bo uh, bokeh feature. So you press a button and it basically takes it. It, it says it's an auto bokeh, but uh, Camera Conspiracies was pretty good in that regards. He said that it basically brings you out to a 2.8 all the time when you've got it on you, and when you press that button, it'll drop it into its 1.8 aperture, which it's supposed to have anyway, which you should basically be filming in all the time, but basically to get everything accurate and clean, it'll always be about 2.8. I 
when you press that button, it'll drop down to its its best aperture. It's widest open at 1.8. So that was pretty interesting. The other guys didn't pick up on that, so that was good that he did. Um, insane high speed stuff. Does do it only in bursts, but it'll go up to 960 frames a second in burst. You, I think it's like a 20, 30 second burst mode where you can do it. But some of the footage out of that, a little bit grainy, but really, really cool. Um, so yeah, a nice little feature. It does have a face softener, so for, I guess for, I don't know how you say it, but any other way, but for the ladies, I guess, or for the guys that wanna fix up their head uh, and make it look a little bit prettier, it's got a thing on there which basically will soften the skin and give it a little bit of a creamy. The old days, we used to put stockings over the lenses to get that sort of soft look, and uh, now you've got a digital version. So that was pretty cool. So some good features there for, for that in that regards. It's 4K, no record limit. That unfortunately was sort of smashed out because uh, Matty Hoppier had in 30 degree Celsius temperatures, filmed for about an hour and a half and it overheated. You have to sh straight away go in and take off the normal heat overheat uh, range or alarm and put it up to high. You will then be able to get uh, standard stuff but then Potato Jet put it in his oven, which he's got. He's got a special oven. He tests the cameras out for heat, and he had it going in 4K, and I think it uh, overheated at 20 minutes at 40 degrees Celsius. So that, again, not really good for me because work gets up to 50 degrees. So Canon M50, you've never had a drama with it. The GoPros, I have had dramas. I don't have the GoPro here. I don't know. I keep pointing to my Rode mic. Well, let's go. Thanks, Road. Um, <laughs> my GoPro I have had shut down. Even at the river, I've had it shut down in sun. Uh, it, Australia obviously gets freaking hot. I've never seen snow. So, yeah, it's amazing. Um, but, yeah, so that was a bit disappointing on the temperature. So that's something to be aware. If you are going to record in 4K, you will probably have temperature issues. You're going to have to sort of get what you can in fast before it overheats and then let it rest. Just give you, plan yourself some time, I guess, if you are gonna get it. it does have active stabilizers, but that crops in a heap. Uh, the active stabilizer is the good one. The, there's a normal mode, then there's a stabilizer, which is, they're both crap. Uh, you'll need a gimbal if you're gonna use it. And active, it was pretty good, but it does have a fair decent crop. Uh, so that was a bit disappointing. Does have S log and your normal Sony stuff. The menus, as per Sony normal, are crap. All three of the all three of the guys I watch all agree that the menu system is still shit, and Sony needs to fix that and go to Canon and check out their menu lists. Um, it's got a one-inch sensor, same as the old camera. I don't know why they've kept the the old sensor. The colours weren't too bad, but I'm not a big fan of the Sony image coming out of I actually prefer the Canon uh, the best one I've seen is the Olympus and the Panasonic uh, camera conspiracy has done a bit on those but he had that Olympus and he had that running the other day and the color the image out of that was pretty insane it's only 8-bit there's no 10-bit for the color which is again I don't know why it's brand new you're building a camera for vloggers that's what they want they all want 10-bit color they want that dynamic range uh, why wouldn't you put that in there very silly it's got the inbuilt microphone now the sound I thought was really good when the boys were talking through it it comes with a uh, fluffy dead cat that you can stick on the top they didn't show how it sticks on the top it just sort of sticks on um, that can sometimes be an issue but the sound was fantastic. Even with wind noise with the, their supplied Sony Dead Cat, it cut out a heap of wind noise and it, they had really good sound. So that I was super impressed with. Um, but it also has the jack so you can plug in your your Rode Wireless Goes or your, or your Video Micro Go or whatever you want to do and add that onto the hot shoe. So you do have that option. Uh, no touch screen. It does have a flippy screen, but no touch screen. Uh, it has a product showcase 
mode, which uh, Potato Jet talked about, and that was pretty good. And I think if you're in this environment where you're doing something like I do, where we talk about the products, basically when you bring it in, it will automatically focus on that and then take it away, it'll come straight back to you. So where you've normally, this will be out of focus to you, uh, with that camera, it'll basically lock onto that with this special mode on, pick that up, get it perfectly focused, and then come back and that. Obviously with the Canon, it's staying on my face because that's where I've got the square, uh, and that will be blurry. So if that makes sense to you, I think it was a pretty good idea for, for the vlogging guys, for the YouTube guys. There's a lot of guys that do stuff in an office and do reviews and bits and pieces, they're gonna be looking at that camera, and I think that will be a big selling point for them. Again, a lot of good stuff in this camera, um, but still, like all cameras, they all have their weaknesses. Um, Built-in ND filters, didn't really talk about the ranges of it. I didn't see too much of it. Um, and the biggest problem I had with it is 800 US. Now, you can get a little Bluetooth uh, mini tripod handle that controls the camera as well, that bolts on. That's another 150 bucks US. So 950 US dollars, uh, that's in the 16 to 1700 dollar range. That's the Canon RP sort of ballpark. Um, yeah, that's way above the M6, way above the M50, which is the go-to, does 4K, does all the things, interchangeable lenses, so you can put the wide angle on if you want, you can go the zoom, you can go whatever. This has obviously just got a telescopic view. The zoom also was pretty crap too. Super, super slow. Like really, really slow. If you had to do something fast and get in on someone and come crop into someone's face, just be like. So yeah, uh, be aware of that. As I said, nothing's ever perfect. Uh, it was, I was pretty impressed. I went to three different reviews to get a good idea of it. Uh, all three had different things that they talked about and different views and, and, and uh, I guess, viewpoints on different things. So it was, I think I got a pretty good idea on it. I think it's a good camera. Uh, is it perfect? No. Would I get it? No, not for that price. I could realistically get two Canon M50s for the same price as that, and that is something that, yeah, you just could not beat. You can't use it for a camera. It's basically just one a one-trick pony. It's all for video. Uh, I think you've got some other options. Yeah. And if you're around the fifteen to sixteen hundred dollar mark, Australian, what's the Olympus? The Olympus is about twenty-two to twenty-five hundred, I think. And then you've got to add lenses, so that's a little. That's the next level, I guess. But the RPs around the eighteen to nineteen hundred mark. You can definitely get them on eBay for that. So. Canon EOS RP, full frame, or that. So, I mean, it is pocketable, but, and that's what they, 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 a lot of them did go on about it's pocketable. It's not pocketable. You've got a wind muff on the top that'll get knocked off. You've got the joystick, which will fit in your other pocket, where you're putting your phone and your keys and your wallet. You're not putting that in your pocket. Vloggers are gonna have, all have backpacks. It's going in a backpack. Please don't talk about pocketability because it ain't. Because the only thing that's pocketable is a mobile phone, and that's a, that's a pocketable camera. End of story. Can't be any more than that. Right, that's it on the Sony. I think everyone's had enough of the Sony in the last 24 hours. It's my bit. What am I at? Holy crap, I'm way over. <laughs> There's a fair bit to get through. Um, anyway, um, last but not least, Canon rumors. Uh, CR3, so it's pretty much a fact. Source says, and they couldn't say any more, couldn't give a definitive price because they would find out, Canon would find out who, who dropped the uh, leak. The R5 will definitely be under 4,000. So after those that stuff up from Camera Warehouse in Australia um, and the European version saying also anywhere up to six to seven grand US, thank God it's not going to be that. Oh. Um, I was one of the first to see it and it was just shocking and I was hoping it wasn't but it's like oh no that's that was how they're going to do it so thank god the cripple hammer's been removed under 4,000 US dollars I think it's 
probably around the 37 to 3800 mark, maybe 30, 36.99, 30, 35, or it'd be good if it was 34.99 US, that'd be a good price, or maybe the 37.99 mark, something like that. But that's good. So, uh, and release July also, and that's from the same source. So, four weeks, six weeks away, I guess let's call it, and we'll finally get the full lockdown, full price, full everything on the R5. That's it uh, from me, another day. Thanks for stopping. And I just hit record time on the N50. <laughs> anyway, that's it from me, another day. I will see you all again tomorrow. Thanks for stopping by. If you're going that way, that way, I'll see you soon. Peace. Ah.